Christmas season, the Salvation Army gets a lot of attention for helping those in need through angel tree adoptions and the Red Kettle campaign. But Captain Monica Saylor knows firsthand the Salvation Army provides a safety net all year long. Her Salvation Army story started when she was four and ended up in the emergency room with her mom after stepping on her father's heroin needle. The nurse in the emergency room said, you really need to get out of the situation. You need to get your kids out of the situation or somebody's going to get killed, probably you, as my father was very abusive towards her. For her mom, escaping Monica's abusive, drug-addicted father wasn't as simple as walking out with the kids. So while he was at work the next day, she put our clothes in black trash bags and put them out in front of the house as if it were regular trash. And the next day when he went to work, she tied those trash bags to our double stroller and we ran away on foot. And she didn't know what to do, so she called the cops and the police came and they took us to a Salvation Army shelter in downtown Philadelphia. And that is the place we called home for a little while. In the shelter, Monica's mother started counseling while her three children settled into their new life. And the lieutenant who was there invited her to church. And she said, thanks, but no thanks. I'm Jewish. My mom's Jewish. Um, but eventually we went to church and we got involved with their music programs, their summer camp, after school program. My first job was at a Salvation Army summer camp. Monica says Salvation Army staff was encouraging, telling her she was smart, even throwing out the word college. That's exactly where she ended up. In fact, on top of being an ordained minister, Monica has several degrees, including a master's in social work from an Ivy League school. But she ended up right back where she started, the Salvation Army. I went to college, I went to graduate school, and I felt called to the Salvation Army in full-time service um, as a core officer, which is what I do here in Roanoke. And so I've committed my life to serving the people that the Salvation Army serves and loving them how I was loved when I was a young child. Now, as a leader, she has a unique perspective many don't expect. You know, I know what it's like to have to go to bed when the sun goes down because you don't have electricity. You know, I know what it's like when there's no food in the freezer because the food stamps don't get you through the whole month. I know what it's like to be picked on as the poor kid at school. It definitely gives me a unique perspective. Um, my story is quite unique in that from the Salvation Army from the ground up, you know, I've been involved. This is my life. And her two younger siblings made it their lives as well. All three have devoted their lives to the nonprofit's mission. So I am the Salvation Army story. I know it works. I believe in it. I've committed my life to it. As if the Salvation Army hadn't impacted Monica's life enough, her father ended up in one of its recovery programs. Monica says she used to resent when he told others the Army raised his three kids when he and their mother couldn't. Now she says it's a privilege to do the same for other families helping to rewrite their story. What the Salvation Army exists to do is to change the cycle of poverty. So we want people who have been struggling for generations to not have to struggle anymore. And so we, we want to put ourselves out of business uh, in a sense. Until that day comes and the Salvation Army can close its doors, Monica will continue changing lives. In helping change the cycle of poverty, Captain Saylor started a new rule this year for Angel Tree families. Now parents can only sign up for three years of assistance in a row and are required to take financial and parenting classes.